Ooh, that's a hot mug, guy. It has been nearly a quarter century since the first Gladiator movie came out. Still regarded as one of the best of the decade in the top five for Ridley Scott for his all-time filmography. And the concept of Gladiator 2 has been passed around for two decades, hopping around from a totally different array of screenwriters, one of them being a strange time-traveling sort of romp of immortality by Nick Cave the singer. Apparently it was a terrible script, but the story was bonkers, apparently about Maximus coming back to life and then becoming immortal and going throughout the centuries and the millennia. That might have been a better movie than this one. Gladiator 2 takes place 16 years after the first one following Lucius, who is played by Paul Mescal. And this was the one that a lot of people thought was going to be the holder of the story for a long time. And it is, it just doesn't very much variate from that of Russell Crowe's story from the first film. For the first two thirds of this movie, you have beat for beat, wife dies, wants revenge against person of power who had it, go to Colosseum, fight random people, people try to usurp and relieve said gladiator but fail. They made me once again question why screenwriter David Scabra has a fucking job. This guy has written one good movie. Otherwise, he's done The Day There Stood Still remake, All the Money in the World, Napoleon. This guy gets to write the sequel that has been fucking talked about for decades. The film is so safe with what it does, and it's just going from beat to beat without the substantial feeling and the warranting of what made it feel like that as the first film did. There's actually been this interview going around with the cinematographer of this film who also worked on the first film and he's been calling Ridley Scott lazy. Apparently Ridley really liked the idea of using multiple and I'm not talking like two, I'm talking about four to six cameras at once for Napoleon and then he used it in this film. The cinematographer's like, well, I can only light it one way then. There's no interesting way to create any visual storytelling here. There's one in which Lucius is giving a speech and I could tell exactly the six camera angles and you can see how the lighting is just kind of meh and it's like that throughout the entire movie and I don't understand why you would put so much effort into wanting to get this movie made eventually and only to just be kind of like Bleh, with how it comes out. Not to say though that the film doesn't have any positives. Paul Mescal is a pretty decent choice. He was really good in Ordinary People from what I've seen and while I maybe wasn't the biggest fan of After Sun, I didn't think it was as great as everyone said it was, he showed that he can do so subtle acting and subtle nuances is something that Gladiator was full of. I always love this clip from Russell Crowe on the Howard Stern show talking about that opening. He just comes up to me and goes, I'm just going to shoot you contemplating. I want you to look over to your right and I want you to see a small bird. Perhaps it makes you smile. The bird takes off and the bird will fly away and I want you to watch its flight and its flight brings you back to the battlefield. And he goes and action. I'm pretty sure I did every single thing he asked and I brought the attention back to the battlefield and he just came up to me good you and me are gonna be fucking great together mate <laughs> the problem is though gladiator 2 doesn't let anyone have any subtlety there's some exposition lines that are obviously directed toward the audience you don't have to say it out loud multiple times for me to understand it i didn't mind pedro's story in terms of his confliction with the twin emperors and then also trying to do what connie wants him to do in terms of lucius there's not enough there to really substantiate it it feels so much like the actions of those who are trying to assist maximus in the first one there is one person who does have a bit of an interesting note and that's denzel the alternate version of oliver reed's character and oliver reed's character in the first film is one of my favorite characters in that entire movie. But it's in the final quarter of the movie. It's like almost a prelude of the Hannibal character that he's going to play when they do the Hannibal movie, if that movie ever does happen. But it felt so long in the tooth to get there that I wish it had happened earlier or certain aspects have happened earlier. You seeing he's trying to shift people's allegiances, taking advantage of people. But there's one moment in the story that is such a plot contrivance. Someone says something that that someone overhears, that person then goes to someone who is a senator of sort, and immediately afterwards, that senator then meets this other person who 
had no idea that this person would have such a fucking gold mine, but acts as though they would have the gold mine, and then said gold mine of knowledge is used to usurp and to power shift. Boom, 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 boom. It all happens at once and it doesn't feel natural. That's a very ever fleeting problem with this movie. There are moments of gold in here, if maybe a bit chipped, but it's stalled by the amount of unnatural things that happen in terms of the story's progression. There's a point where someone dies. It's such on the nose with how someone else died in the movie that I laughed in the theater. Gladiator 2 has some okay aspects to it but considering we waited so long for this movie it doesn't warrant the wait the first film is such a fucking good movie what we do in life echoes in eternity and it feels like ridley just looked at that quote of his and then used it to wipe his ass. Gladiator 2 isn't the worst movie of the year. Absolutely not. It's still commendable. There's still really good production design. There's still really good battle sequences. Even if that whole bit about him saying that the opening was the biggest battle sequence he's ever done, that's not true. Kingdom of Heaven still has a bigger one. Oh, by the way, there's a trebuchet at the defense of the first city, which also had been taken 200 years prior to when the movie says it's taken. But there's a trebuchet there, and the trebuchets didn't exist for another thousand years. But hey, Ridley's the one that put a sniper scope in Napoleon, so fuck history, I guess. Either way, Gladiator 2 may have some elements that people will enjoy, and there is some decent acting and performances in this movie, and there is a bit of an interesting element to it at the end of the movie, but it doesn't warrant the wait. It doesn't warrant how long we have waited for this fucking movie. It should have just been one. That or go with a Nick Cave script. That sounded like a bonkers idea. It probably would have been terrible, but at least it sounded cool. So in the end, I'm gonna give Gladiator 2 a three out of seven. That's maybe being a tad bit generous, but I can't deny that there is some decent production value, costume design, performances are good. Just the writing's not great, and Ridley's really just showing his laziness with a lot of this. Even if he is putting in big sequences, shooting them all at the same time with six cameras, that mm, that's, that's sidestepping. <laughs> Anyways, those are my thoughts. Very curious to see what you guys have to say. Did you like anything about this movie? What do you guys think about this movie? What do you guys think about the original? Let me know in the comments below. Anyways, guys, that's all for me. Hope you enjoyed this review. If you did, leave a like, and if you're interested in more, subscribe. Until then, see you guys next time.